Hello, my name is Max Bromberg. And I'm Callum Armstrong, and welcome to this new YouTube channel, The Aulos Collective, where we're going to talk about all things Auletic. So today's video is the first video of a series of videos where we're going to talk about Aulos playing and read making and uh, many other interesting things about the Aulos. And today's first topic is in fact about read making. So uh, should we crack on? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> So Aros reeds are double reeds, a bit like what you would find on a modern oboe or a bassoon. However, unlike oboe and bassoon reeds that are uh, constructed by tying two pieces of cane that form the blades onto a metal tube called a staple, uh, Aros reeds are made in a different way. Uh, they are called crushed reeds and this is because they are heat formed. Uh, you uh, essentially take a tube of cane, uh, a bit like this, and uh, you you heat form it and you mould it into this shape. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Okay. Now, interesting thing about this is uh, that uh, we have here two different materials. So, the material that is used since uh, many years for most Western instruments is this one, the Arundo Donax. And uh, this material we use for um, oboe and bassoon, but also for single reeds like the saxophone or clarinet. And um, we've been using this material for many years and doing our first steps with Arundo Donax, been pretty happy. And uh, many videos on my personal YouTube account are on uh, Arundo Donax, many of the first ones. And um, then we discovered, with uh, together with Caleb Simone, who um, uh, did a lot of research on uh, ancient texts, that um, the proposal of these texts is uh, looking much like uh, another material. So the way the material is described, where it grows, and uh, how his uh, specifications are, actually made us think that it might be this other material, which is Phragmites australis which uh, is today known with other instruments like for example the Hichiriki reeds are made of Phragmites, also the Zona and uh, several other instruments more from traditional societies are using this material and it was amazing for us because we um, tried this material it took quite a while because you need to season it, work on it but the effect of it was amazing for us so we have uh, since then materials uh, or reeds with uh, a much better sound they work much better together the balance of the two reeds are much better and uh, then also the um, reeds are um, more round in sound and uh, so finally for us the results were so good that we uh, decided to drop completely the uh, Arundo Nonax and nowadays we only work with Phragmites Australis. Absolutely. Should we, should we move on to the reed making demonstration? Yeah. Let's yeah. go for the reed making demonstration. All right, mm -hmm. I'll get my apron on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Firstly, a segment of seasoned cane is soaked for a period to make it soft. In order to form the waste, the reed is immersed in boiling water to make it for a short while even more flexible. Having been removed from its hot bath, 
it is constricted in the middle section by use of a tensioned cord. and then held in place more permanently by tying thread around the constriction. The reed is then reboiled and the blades moulded by compressing one end of the tube between the fingers. Finally, the blades of the reed are transferred into a reed clamp, so the reed doesn't spring back into its original shape. The best reeds are symmetrical at both the waist and along the entire blade length. In this process, faulty cane can crack or fold badly, leading to some reeds becoming unsuitable for playing. The newly formed reed is then set out to dry thoroughly. Here is a finished pair of reeds. They've been actually uh, seasoned for several years already and uh, we've played them for uh, several months. And um, I will explain you a little bit about the reeds and uh, what terminology we are using for the different parts of the reed. So this here is the reed caps and uh, I apply the reed caps always on the reed to after playing, very important after playing. You see that um, the um, blades here are nicely closed and uh, the reed caps, they do help us. So we gently would apply them on the first part of the reed and uh, they also protect the reed when we handle it. Mm. I will take them off so you can nicely see the uh, the reed blades now. Um, this is the blades of the reed and uh, you see they are nicely equal which is pretty important for having a good sound and uh, then uh, this part of the reed we would call uh, the onion or the bulb part about the reed and uh, this onion uh, needs to be nicely round and this will make that the reed has a nice, good, full and rich sound. If it's getting too flat, then the sound will will go. And um, then here, this part is uh, the constriction. So it's the part where the reed is constricted. Um, you want these folds here to be really gentle and uh, not too strong and not uh, too much overfolding and uh, especially then also you don't want them to be leaking so you really want that uh, that it's airtight and um, then we've got this part of the reed which is uh, the stem and um, this stem is uh, this part can be fragile uh, same as this part here on the top so when you touch the reed for plugging it into the instrument uh, you want to make sure you uh, hold it in this position here because this is the part which is pretty strong, um, less easy to break. But the stem can be a bit more fragile and all these blades and the part at the tip of the reed, they are very fragile. So um, this is a good area to hold and with this be a bit careful. And um, then here we have a waxed thread around the bottom of the reed. And this wax thread we're using to um, plug it when we plug it into the instrument so that it is nicely sealed. So in this case, you see there is not enough thread around. It's uh, still a bit loose, but um, I would bind a bit more thread around it and then it would sit nicely tight in here. And uh, in later parts, we're going to talk about that because uh, like this, for example, it wouldn't speak nicely. It would squeak and 
not probably not even sound um, but yeah those are things that we're going to talk about in the future videos you will see so looking forward to see you I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let's go for the next one too. see you next time